Hello, it's Johnny coming to you from the Circle Bar X Ranch and Grill here in Midland, Michigan. And I would like to make this video to uh, fill in the gaps on my workshop at Wasup 5 called uh, Pete Seeger Style Ukulele. Now, you know, Pete Seeger was uh, one of the founding members of the Weavers, and that was kind of the, uh, they were the parents of a lot of the folk groups that uh, were popular in the late 50s and 60s. And you know, Pete Seeger played the banjo and we're ukulele players. And I considered uh, going to get my banjo uke to uh, do this class. And uh, that would have been fine, but you know, most of us are playing uh, standard high G ukes. So I decided that might be uh, a wiser choice to make. So you don't have to rush out and buy yourself a banjo uke to learn to play in this style, although it certainly applies just in the very same way as, again, if you uh, play a high G uke. And there's a no number of uh, parts that go together, and it probably uh, would take more than a 45, 50 minute uh, workshop to teach it all. So that's why I wanted to make this video. I want to get you started at least at the class and uh, you know teach you some of the elements. And it always takes time to go back home and work at it if you really want to learn it. And if you don't learn it all, that's fine. It just, uh, it's a good alternate for just the, the strumming that we do all the time. Because I found in uh, teaching the classes I've taught in the past that you can only really focus on one thing at a time. And when you're just starting out on the uke, you're trying to remember, oh, how, do, how do I make that F chord? Oh yeah, that's how you do it. And so you know, there's just one step, like I say, if um, First step is learning the chords and being able to make the simpler chords uh, without having to look in on your chord sheet or some kind of a uh, visual aid for that. And you know, it takes time to learn a lot of chords and that's I think why most of us like to play in the key of C because the chords there are relatively simple at least uh, compared to some of the other keys. But we're not really gonna talk about keys too much um, other than C and F. Those are probably the two most typical keys that uh, we like to play our songs in, although I know you don't like B-flat either. But, uh, you know, if you learn to make uh, what we call a closed chord, where all four strings are being uh, fretted, you actually learn 12 chords because every time you move it up, you don't have any open strings, you have a, there's another chord. Here's another, this is actually another C chord. You know, you know this is B-flat, this is B natural, this is uh, C major. And so you don't always have to make it with your, with your three open strings. So, but that's another lesson for another day. So getting back to Pete Seeger, his, um, his go-to uh, lick or, or uh, way of playing is what I call bum ditty. And it's uh, four beats to a measure, you know, so it's in four fourth time. And uh, the, the rhythm is one, two, and three, four, and. So it's one is a whole quarter note, and then uh, two and are two eighth notes shared together. And then you repeat that three, four, and. One, two, and three, four, and. One, two, and three, four, and. So there's a lot of, you know, you could just do that as a strum pattern if you're accustomed to. What makes the bum ditty different is that instead of just having one strumming instrument, you use your thumb and then you use your index finger and they work independently of one another. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know what you call that, just uh, up and down sort of thing. And the way I do the bum ditty, it's a little different than Pete does, but that's okay. I will, I'll try to show you that as well. But uh, what we do is we pick one note down with our thumb, and I'm making my, my C chord. So we're going to pick any of the three, you know, or any four other four strings actually. So we pick that, and that gets a whole beat. One, and then we brush down all the strings with our index finger. And right after we brush down, we come snap right back up on this bottom string with our index finger. So it's one, two, and three, four, and one. Two and three, four and one, two and thumb down, brush down with your index finger on the nail. And that just gives kind of a, you know, gets you back in the strum so it's not all just single notes and finger style. 
just a, a way of uh, changing things up. And Pete does all up picking uh, with his index finger. So I'm doing the thumb down, he's doing on that first and third beat. Pete does index finger up, <coughs> excuse me, I found that more difficult. And I like to anchor my uh, fourth finger, because I do kind of a three finger style a lot. And I anchor my ring finger right here on the face of the uke, <coughs> excuse me. And so that gives me a position sense of where my fingers are. So again, it's thumb, any, any string, brush down, see that's the Pete style, index up, the Johnny Hunt Pete Seeger style is thumb down, two and, and it's always strumming however many strings, if you only strum a couple of strings it's okay, because it's just that percussive thing, you know, if you can reach up and get all four that's fine, don't, don't get too uh, overly concerned about that, at least for now. So it's one, two, and, and as soon as you brush down, two, and. Those two up, uh, down and up have to share that beat. And again, you, on your first and third notes of the uh, measure, you can pick any of the four strings. So one, I'm gonna mix it up here. I'm gonna start on the top. I make the analogy when you're trying to learn new things, it's easy to get going too fast and you don't want to do that. Get it right, go slow. It's like, uh, you know, when you, typing was a really good class, that was my favorite, it was actually my most practical and useful class I took in high school, because I learned to type. You know, when you start doing 10 words a minute, but you make sure that you get your 10 words a minute with no errors, and that's what we want to do first. And the speed comes, that's where repetition comes in. And like I say, I can't get you up to uh, playing like Pete Seeger in an hour or less, but uh, I can show you the principles and that, that's what we're gonna do here. So again, it's thumb down, brush up. And maybe you can hear a line of a song there, like, uh, let's see. A skip to my loo, okay? So, and we'll get into doing some songs at the end, and uh, probably do a skip to my new in another key, because in the high G uke, I'm going to run out of notes. I'm, I'm going to want some notes that are an octave lower here on the, on the G string. But uh, anyway, we'll get to that. But again, just... And all, all, you know, all your basic chords. F, same thing. Thumb down, brush down, index up. One, two, and three, four, and... One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and, and then G seventh. Okay, so make a G seventh. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and, and G. Thumb, brush up. The second slide I showed uh, made a little tablature there, and of course T is thumb, I is index, an arrow down means you're strumming down, and an arrow up means you're strumming up, okay, or picking up actually. <coughs> so pick, strum, pick, alright. So we start with a C chord, there's another note in the C chord that you may not be aware of, and that's C, D, E, F, G. So uh, this, this, the second note I'm gonna play is, is, is this uh, G on the E string, the second string. So here we go, nice and slow. Bottom string, first string. Pick, brush up, and then third thread of the second string. Open third string. Open second string, third string. Thumb, brush up, thumb, brush up, thumb, brush up. Okay, 
bass or a C chord and you know practice. <coughs> I always recommend when I'm teaching beginners as much as possible use your first stringer first finger. You don't have a stringer unless you're fishing and you got a lot of fish. So first finger at the first fret, second finger at the second fret, third finger, I'm not counting my thumb of course, third fret, and this is called your pinky. And at some point in your ukulele career, you're going to find this is a very uh, handy guy to have at the fourth fret. So, you know, some chords you can't do that, like, but for a C chord, index finger at the third fret. And the idea is when you change chords, and especially in first position, you're not moving your whole hand. Okay? And because if, you, if you're doing, you have to move your hand all the time, you lose position sense. But if your hand is steady, and you're just moving fingers, you don't have to look as long, it doesn't take as long to learn uh, using visual cues because you have again that position sense because your hand is stable, it's not up and down the neck like this, okay? So like C chord, you can do your third, one, two, three, ring finger at the one, two, three, third fret. F chord, you can do second finger, middle finger at the second fret and index at the first fret. Of course, when you go to make a G seventh, you just move your uh, middle finger from the fourth to the third string, and you can't, you know, you, you can't use this finger for two strings unless you're somebody I've never seen. So you know, you're gonna have to use your ring finger there at the second fret, and that's fine. And you just slide it back for C. So that's uh, just kind of an aside, <coughs> but uh, that's how you get a faster handle on how to change the chords. Okay, so then in the key of F, or the chord of F, make our F chord, second fret open, first fret open, okay, here, here, and I'm going to pick the top string with my thumb, brush, pick, thumb down, th uh, third string, top string, second string, third string, second string, chord you can do G seventh uh, except I want to get this note so we will we'll do both you know um, G and G seventh are interchangeable a seventh can always be a major chord but a G major chord is not always going to be a seventh a seventh is a I like to call it a tension creating chord you have a seventh chord unless it's a blues song it's tense all the way through and you come back to the major chord that resolves the, the seventh chord, like C major resolves G seventh. All right, so again, that's another uh, lesson for another day. I'm gonna make a G chord here. And I'm gonna pick with my thumb on the first string, second string, third string, second string. Thumb, brush up, thumb, brush up, thumb, Okay, or here's a G seventh chord. Then back to C. And that kind of lets you know that I'm ending and not going through the pattern again. Okay, so you got to do something a little bit different to make it clear that you're ending. So I'm just doing a thumb. Brush, brush, brush down, brush up. And that is a nice chord to end with. Okay? So those are just some uh, ideas how to alternate the first beat of the measure. Okay? Uh, the one, two, and, and the third beat. That's why I skipped to my loo, we're not going to play in the key of G, but anyway. So uh, the other thing that's important to know is finding the notes, uh, playing scales in the different keys. So I want to I take time to go over the C scale 
just picking one note at a time, and then uh, talking about a, the corresponding chord that goes with that note most of the time. Now you can always have any note within any chord, but to play scales and fill them out doing this bum ditty style thing, uh, it's, it's, you got to start with knowing where your scales are. So I'm going to go over the C scale first and then the F scale. So C scale, uh, we're fortunate, this is our lowest note on the uke, which is our uh, third string open, low, uh, C. And again, on a low G uke, you got all these uh, high G notes are an octave lower, so they'll be going da, 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 instead of da, 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 da. Okay, so, uh, you know, I used to pretty much use low G for playing melodies, but uh, there are not too many songs that you can't play with a high G uke, but you end up going up the neck, and that's a, that creates a whole another another whole level of uh, complication. So again, that's not for today. Well, I would like to show you the scales, and you know, it's, it's boring to learn. Yes, it is, but you have to have a sense of where the notes are in the scale for the songs that you're playing chord melody style, like a you're using this uh, bum ditty thing to play a melody which I will show you at the end uh, you have to know where your where your notes are so again C scale open C so G C E A D is the second fret of the one two third string E is the open second string F like in an F chord is the first fret of the second string G is in both the C and G chords, and for our purposes, we're going to we're going to play it with a C chord, okay? But it's the third fret of the first second string, okay? Uh, a note is part of an F chord, as I will show you in a bit. That's just the open A string, okay? G or G seventh, the seventh note of the C major scale is B. So that goes over a G or a G, a G or a G seventh chord, and then the uh, the octave note, uh, uh, one octave higher than here, is our C chord note, which is the first string at the third fret. So again, uh, those notes are open C, third string open, third string second fret is D, first string open is E. First string at the first fret with the index finger is F. Second string, a second string at the third fret is G, G chord. This is a C chord. It's got that note in. Okay. Uh, a note is the open A on the first string. B note is the second fret of the first string, and C. All right, so get to where you can go up and down the scale. This is up the scale, A, B, C, and down. C, B, A, G, F, open E, D, C. scale together, get the scale down, so you know, you don't have to think about it, about, oh, where's that G note, I forgot, is it here, no, 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 it's here, okay, so get a handle on that first, where each note is, and then we're going to play what I call uh, scales against the chord, scales over chords, <coughs> so the way we do that, uh, we're in the key of C, because we're ending with a C note, okay, beginning with a C, we're going to pick our C, we're going to have a C chord going at that same time. So we're going to pick the note with our thumb, brush down, and back up. Back 
up on just the, the first string. So C chord and, and our next note is D, okay, which is here. And so the D note goes with the G or G seventh chord. Okay, I'm gonna play a G major chord. I'm gonna pick that string. Pick, strum and bum, diddy bum, diddy bum, diddy. The third note of the C scale again is open E. We're gonna play that over the C chord. Bum, diddy bum, I'm oh, sorry, bum, diddy E, strum pick, E, E, strum pick, E, strum pick. And the next note is F. So guess what chord we're going to play an F note with? That's right, it's F, okay? F strum up, F, strum up, F, strum up. Okay, the next note of the C scale is G. Again, I'm going to choose to play it against a C chord. We can play it against a G chord because it's part of that uh, chord as well. <coughs> So I'm going to pick it with my thumb, brush up G, next note is A, so A is in an F chord, open A, top string, or first string, which is on the bottom. That's something that's always bothered me, but it's never going to change, is that a right-hander like myself, holding the uke in standard position, the top string should be the first string, in my opinion, but no, it wasn't done that way. Back, I wasn't even around to be asked. So first, second, third, fourth. A is on the first string open, and it's in the F chord. So we're gonna thumb, brush up, thumb, brush up, thumb. Bum, diddy, bum, diddy, one, two, and three, four, and. And then our next note in the scale is B. over a G seventh or a G chord. One, two, and three, four, and one, and three, four, and, and then another C on the top, is that ends our C scale. Okay, now when you get on this top string, this is an advanced variation, don't even worry about it today. But on your up pick, you can pick a different note. So here's our A note over an F chord. I'm finding it easier to use my thumb uh, rather than picking up on the to and, okay? None of this is hard and fast. This is how I learned it, so that's how I'm going to teach it. But if you find, you know, if you want to hold your hand like this and that works better, or you want to play like this, that's fine. There's no right or wrong. That's one thing that attracted me to a traditional folk music way back when, is that there's no rules. And uh, that's what, you know, to go way back in the way back machine to like the 60s, I took one year of piano lessons when I was eight and nine, years old and I learned you know I must have learned some things but I didn't want to play classical music and I didn't want to do drills all day I wanted to go play ball with my friends and so I did but uh, I guess I learned enough to get me started on understanding because it's really dry sometimes uh, to teach theory so I don't I don't teach too much but it's good because theory helps you take something you've already learned and apply it uh, to different situations rather than everything being by rote because if you learn only by rote you can't uh, use some of the things you've already studied and, and got a good handle on to learn something new that's similar okay so I, I taught myself enough theory to understand you know, what's going on so uh, whatever that has to do with what we're doing I'm not sure but I think that's an important thing is you know, if you want to understand, you have to either find somebody to teach you theory or get on the internet, you know, YouTube or there's all kinds of sites 
that can just give you a basic understanding of you know why why do CF and G7 go together? And there's a tool called the Circle of Fists that I use in my class, my group classes, and it's really helpful to, to get that understanding of how chords interact with one another and how to change keys. Uh, you know, for some ungodly reason, who knows why, you might find yourself in an orchestra of um, brass instruments, and they like to play songs with flats in them. And so most of those songs to play on the youth, they're all closed chords for the most part. And you might not be ready to do that, but uh, you know, if you transpose and use a capo, like they can play an E flat with a, by playing in C with a capo at the third fret. But uh, anyway, that's just another uh, bonus tidbit of information. So let's go back to the C scale. Like I said, if you get, so it's thumb down, brush, That's the thing that you can't vary on unless you just have to, okay? Again, there's no absolutes. But you want to keep the dum da 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 that, That's kind of the peak style, okay? That's the, the, the essence of it, the core. Okay, and then... back to C. Okay, but that's an exception to the rule. Don't get bogged down in that. Get the bum diddy, bum diddy, bum diddy. That's what counts, all right? <coughs> so now, a lot of people when they start out, they buy a ukulele, they only use the first three frets. And we're going to move into the twilight zone. We're going to go all the way down to the eighth fret because I want to show you the F scale. Because um, when you, especially when you have a high G uke, you're missing three notes that you have on a low G uke, and you know if you're playing the key of G, and if uh, the melody dips down, if it ends up going down. If you play your G string, it's an octave lower, so you have that note there. That's another um, theoretical thing. I'm working on the assumption most of us, like myself, play a high G uke. So again, if you when you start running out of notes. You have to jack it up higher, and that's, that takes you further down the, the neck, and that's okay because it's, it's they, it doesn't bite. Okay, so um, get yourself a custom that you can do this, and uh, you can play notes up the fret. So let's go through the F scale. So we're in the key of F. <coughs> First note in the F scale is F. All right, so we would go bum, bums, bum. Diddy, thumb strumming. The next note is G. G again is in the C chord or C seventh. A is the third note, open A. Now I'm doing it back when I'm picking. Instead of thumb, crush. Um, you may not do what you like. Okay. B flat. I like to make bar chords. You can do it however you like. Fifth note in the C scale is, on the F scale, pardon me, is C. But we're gonna, again, we could play it over a C chord or a C7, but we're going to play it over an F chord. Okay, so here's F, but this C is still in that, still in the F chord. So we're up at the F, F, G, A, B flat, now C. Bum, diddy, bum, diddy, bum, diddy, bum, diddy. And then a D note, so here we go up the fret. Up the fretboard, <coughs> and here is our D. So it's uh, A B flat B C B flat D, and we're gonna play that over a B flat chord. You say, oh, I don't know B flat chord. This is B flat. Well, so is this. Guess what? This is a movable chord. Down here, if you make a G chord, you can make it a closed chord. By this is your pinky that we talked about a little earlier. I love you. You're such a help to me. 
and you put that the fourth fret and you still have a G chord. Because anytime this fourth string and and fourth string are two frets apart, if the uh, fourth string is two two frets further down the fretboard than the first string, it's the same note. So I'm going to take this closed chord, and instead of playing a G, I'm going to slide it down to A flat, A, I'm sorry, G, B flat, G, A flat, A, B flat. It's not the twilight zone, I say start with C, get that down first. But at some point, you're going to want to play songs in the key of F because you'll find, again, you'll run out of notes on your fourth string. Uh, the next note is C. So this is a C chord. Here's a C chord. Here's a C chord. Here's a C chord. So B flat, B major, C. And here's the E note in it. we're going to play a high F chord at the 5th uh, fret bar, 8th fret with your pinky. So, again, don't bog down on notes up the neck in the F scale. Learn the C scale first, and when you're so comfortable with C that you just need another challenge, then start learning other scales, preferably F first. You're in a G scale. Alright, so anyway. Um, so the bum ditty, that's the first thing that Pete does. Another completely different thing he does a lot uh, with, in conjunction with uh, doing the bum ditty, is he does hammer-ons and pull-offs. Okay, what are those? Uh, hammer-ons. So here's a G chord. So this is hammering on. I'm going to use my pinky because I, the G chord that we all learned, okay, like this, uh, involves our index, middle, ring fingers. And we only have one choice left because our thumb's not going to make it over there. And say so when you do some dexterity exercises, start using your pinky. One thing I did, um, if you go as you're old as I am or pretty close, you remember like Spock did the Star Trek, uh, you know, Vulcan, whatever it is. Okay, and if you start trying to move your fingers independently, that's a good little way to develop uh, dexterity and for your fung fingers to be independent of one another. And you'll find that, that that's a good way to uh, get your pinky involved in the game. Okay, so hammer on with the with the bum ditty. That's a pull off. I'm just snapping my And pull up. Where are you going to find them useful? Let's let's do a chord at a time. So here's a C. So it's the second fret of the fourth string. Which this is an A minor. Okay, here's A minor, right? Here's C. A minor is what we call the relative minor of C. Uh, in that two thirds of a C chord and the notes in the A minor chord are in common. There's a C and an E. And in the C major chord, our favorite chord, this is a G. And in the A minor chord, the notes are C, E, and A, rather than C, E, and G. And moving that G and A is what we call a shuffle. And it goes well with cowboy songs, all right? You'll find that's one good use of a shuffle. So I'm going to show you some shuffles in some of these uh, basic chords. 
F, okay, make an F chord. So I'm hammering on to a D minor, okay, you know our D minor, second fret, second fret, first fret open, okay, two, two, one, zero, and F is two, zero, one, zero, and then make a nice little pair of uh, just shaking up your chords with your left hand. So that's a good hammer on for F is here on the uh, fourth, second, third string of the second fret. Uh, G chord. I okay, showed you this. You can do it over G7. It's tougher because it's a longer reach. See, my, my hand's tilted this way to make a G. And it's tilted more this way to make a G7th, and I'm exaggerating. But here's G, which makes it harder for me to get my pinky down there. And here's G seventh, excuse me. Here's G, and I got my elbow tucked in. And it's a lot easier to access. So, it's, you know, I'll use a G seventh, but a lot of times I'll just play a, a G major chord when we're playing in the key of C. We're doing this Pete Seeger style. So that's C, F, G. Um, so I'll just show you those for now. And again, that's another level is getting your, so your pinky or other fingers involved and doing the hammer-ons and pull-offs, or you can slide. Three notes with, uh, you know, one strum. Second, fourth, second. If you do it fast enough, it'll keep the sustain going. If you don't do it fast enough, it'll fizzle out. And you'll find the wrong fret. All right, so uh, that's another part of the Bum Diddy song, uh, style rather. So the best way for me to show you what it really sounds like is to play a couple of Bum Diddy songs, all right? This first one is Probably one of the dumbest songs ever, but it works great for Bum Diddy because there's only three notes in the melody and it's called Bile Them Cabbage Down. I'm going to play it in the key of C. So, I'm making a C chord. I'm going to hit this note twice. This is a E. I'm going to switch to an F chord. Twice, bum diddy, bum diddy, back to C. Again, playing the E note, the second string open. Bing. And then G or G seventh. And I'm playing this uh, D note. So that's the fourth, second, third string at the second fret. And then I just do it all again. And then, uh, so it's the second half of the verse. Uh, e note. chord and this is an F note a little different here G uh, C I mean so I'm back on the second string well, I'm gonna do one bum ditty on the C switch to G seventh so now I'm on the third string second fret a D note and then an open C so slowly, without any discussion, <coughs> so you can get the idea of how the song sounds. And uh, there's so many uh, heart-rending verses to the song. I'll toss a couple of those in. So one, two, ready, play. F. Back to C. Second string open. G seventh, third string, second fret. Okay, second half, uh, back to open E, second string open. Back to F, F note over an F chord. <coughs> back to C, 
1 G 7th, 3rd string, 2nd fret, C. And that's in that note. Instead of picking just the note, down. <coughs> Alright. So, work on that, and then I can start adding some exciting verses, like... Wild and this is the chorus cabbage down some sea makes them whole cakes G seventh or G round the only song that I can sing C wild and G seventh song to work again. There's only three notes in there. You don't quite cover the whole scale, but you get that rhythm. Bum, diddy, bum, diddy, pick, song. <coughs> All right, so uh, that's one to work with. Another one I uh, played a little bit before in the key of C. I would play an F now. Okay, because we want to learn to play an F as well. Let's skip to my Lou. So we can start with F. Our chords are F, B, and C seventh or C. That's C seventh too. Okay, so so we're on the uh, first string open. Second string. And then we have a note up here with our pinky, like uh, they make a C chord. So it's a uh, C note over an F chord. So here's that first line. Open. Open first string. Second string. First fret. Third, uh, top string on third. First string. Open. Third fret, first string. And then we're on C or C seventh. But the note is here. <coughs> so that's uh, C, D, E, F, G. So, second string, third flat, fret. Highs in the open. Buttermilk. Shoe back to the third fret. And 
then a real C seventh. <coughs> Back to F. Flies in the second string. Buttermilk. Shoe fly. And pinky at the third fret. Shoe. So skip to my just skip. It's the. Uh, Okay, so I'm hammering on to get that note because the rhythm is different on this last measure. Skip to, skip to the, skip to the, you can just leave that note out and then you're not playing the whole melody and that's okay. Skip to the, skip to the, skip to the, my darling. It's harder to play slow than up to speed. your fancy and you think hey this is cool now I'm playing melodies right now just to show you that this is for you can play chord melody style but we can I'm gonna do a couple of songs that is just picking that rhythm out and, you know it's the strum and sing thing that we do most of the time so uh, this is called uh, well may the world go it's a Pete Seeger song it's kind of similar to Bile and cabbage down not too tough <laughs> I'll play in the key of C. Oh, one, two, three, four. Well, may the F world go, world go, world go. I'll just, I won't play the melody, I'll just sing along. Well, may, well, may the world go when I'm far away. Well, may the skiers turn, swimmers churn, the lovers burn. May the F generals learn C when I'm G seventh far away. Well, may the world go, world go, world go. Well, may the world go when I'm far away. Sweet. the video once but uh, everything that I will cover in the class is on this video plus more I don't think we're gonna have enough time to hit all these things so focus first the first thing you want to work is the bum diddy it's the rhythm one two and three four and one two and don't worry about the more complicated stuff at the end that's more to show you where it leads okay and where it can go should you choose to pursue it to that point 
But you can use this for any song, any familiar song, like... Uh, that's not a good one. Uh, let's go with... Um, I'm going back someday, come what may to blue bayou, where the fishing boats sails afloat on blue bayou, and that gal of mine by the son of seventh, by my side be flat, the Pick your own songs, simple songs that you know well, not a lot of difficult chords, and then just a nice straight 4-4 four, four rhythm, and try it out. And I think you'll find that if you get past the initial frustration plateau, say, oh, I can kind of do this, and I think you'll find that uh, it's worth the effort to shake things up a little bit, because that's what I've found is... You go along and you kind of, oh, yeah, me, me, and then, oh, something clicks, and you learn something, and you increase your, your talent level, and, you know, it's just kind of a stair-step thing to the top of the ukulele pyramid, or wherever you want to go, okay? But again, uh, bum ditty's a good technique to have in your pocket of tricks, and it's useful for just about any song, so... Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email. I'll be glad to try to help you get straightened out on this. Uh, my email is johnnyhunt57 at yahoo.com, and that is a 24-hour, 365-7 email, although, you know, I don't get to it every day. But uh, you know, I'll do anything I can to try to help you out with this. So uh, enjoy uh, Pete Seeger's style uke, and uh, look forward to seeing you down the road sometime soon. Thanks for watching.